Snapchat wants to use artificial intelligence to help users have a conversation. Some parents, though, are nervous about this. The feature is powered by the viral AI chatbot tool, uh, ChatGPT, of course. It can offer recommendations, answer questions, even chat with other users. But in Snapchat's version, users can do a whole lot more customization. They can bring their avatar into conversations with others. So it may not always be clear if you're talking to a computer and that has some parents worried. Joining us now to talk more about this, Morgan Wright, the Chief Security Advisor for Sentinel One, and Shelley Palmer, Professor of Advanced Media at the Newhouse School of Public Communications at Syracuse University. Welcome both. And Morgan, we'll start with you. Should parents be worried about AI use in Snapchat? You know, the only thing they should be worried about is if they're not monitoring already what their kids are doing online with social media. This has been one of the great disconnects. You know, we've allowed children to go off with a smart device in their hand and do a lot of these things. AI now does create some issues. It creates issues. We've seen it. Uh, reporters have already used it to simulate being a 13-year-old talking to a 31-year-old to say, how would I sneak out of my parents' house? So it's like anything else. You've got to monitor it. You've got to come up with some rules of the road for how they're going to use it. AI is only as good as the way it's trained to do stuff. So a lot of this will fall back upon what Snap does. Will they have features to where you can shut off AI the same way you can turn on privacy or other things? There's going to be a lot of things we're going to have to learn about how social media and these folks implement this to determine how much level of effort it's going to take for parents to adequately monitor what their children are doing online. Professor Palmer, what are some of the risks in your mind? Are some of these companies rolling out these features because they want to be on the cutting edge of it without really fully understanding how maybe predators might take advantage of some of these tools. To be fair and frank, nobody understands these tools, not uh, even the people who are creating them. These are very powerful word calculators. Um, at the end of the day, they're going to increase productivity dramatically. Workflow and process in businesses, there are many safe and good uses for this technology right now. The least responsible thing I have seen so far is putting this in Snapchat. It is about as irresponsible and as dangerous a tool that you could put in the hand of a child as I can possibly imagine because of what's known as the alignment problem. The coders, the engineers, the people who have put this in place have no idea if the AI itself is aligned with the outcomes they are looking for. And this is a well understood problem in the AI industry. And to put this out as a commercial product without immense guardrails, as Morgan just suggested, is insanity. Okay, I mean, Morgan, insanity, do you agree? You know, he, he actually brought up a really good point. We just released at RSA a brand new tool using ChatGPT4, but it's called Purple AI. It allows you to do natural language processing and inquire upon threats. Do I have a Chinese threat actor in my environment? Do I have this? Use these very specific use cases. There's a lot of good things for it, but it goes back to what it says. The biggest problem is not the AI. It's the machine learning that goes into the AI, AI that trains it what to do. If it's trained bad, it will act bad. And that's what I think we're getting into. You've got adults that don't really understand anymore how kids think and how they're going to use it to do certain things. So there's, again, the alignment, a huge disconnect between the outcomes you want and the value you're trying to provide. It, it's uh, I can see it's going to cause more problems than anything else initially until we figure out how to get a handle on this. Okay, and Professor Palmer, I also want to ask you about a report out right now about workers who are using AI to hold down multiple jobs, unbeknownst to their employers, making multiple incomes. They're using AI to do some automated work for them. Could this help or hurt the workforce ultimately? Look, uh, productivity is the key driver of economic success throughout the history of humans. So anyone who's more productive is going to be more economically successful. One of the things that generative AI empowers us to do is be 5 to 25% more productive instantly. And with the new autonomous agents like AutoGPT and Agent GPT, which literally you don't prompt them to do work, you tell them your goal and it does the work for you, we're on the precipice of something completely new. The last time we saw an increase in productivity like this was when the light bulb became commercially available and our days went from up with the sun, asleep with the sun to 24 hour work days. This actually increases our productivity that much. So yeah, people are doing an awful lot more and there are gonna be winners and there are clearly gonna be losers. Morgan, who, who will be the losers in all of this? You know, I think parents are because they're going to, they're not, if, when we talk about children, they're not going to have a clear understanding of what this technology is going to do. There's no, you can no longer bury your head in the sand. The other losers are going to be, is going to be our government and other folks. If we don't take the threat from China and Russia about how they're using AI, 
They're developing things called lethal autonomous weapon systems. They're using AI and drones, and they're allowing it to, without human intervention, to determine targets and go after it. So there's a lot of ethics around AI we haven't figured, and like the professor said, you've got people at Google going, we don't really know how it works. It's a black box that does something, and we're not sure how to control it. So how, you know, the 2001 Space Odyssey may not be farther off than what we thought. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.